Thank you so much for streaming us on 10 TV Plus. I'm Dylan Robichaud alongside our own Jay Plyburn. Yes. And Jay, the snow out there today, we're calling it a, a southern slider. Snow today? Not for you. Oh, okay. But it's going to slide. To south. It's going to slide down to our south today. I got to tell you how much I enjoyed that sunshine out there yesterday. It, it ended up being a really nice start to the work week. Right, That's and we're not, we're not bit. looking at any more sunshine until probably Friday at the soonest. Thank God. So we're going to be. Uh, That's why we live for the weekends. Yep, we're going to be sun starved here. Weekend is a different story. We have another storm in oh, time gosh. for Saturday. So let's dive right into that weather story for you. And again, we are going to be tracking uh, snow out there. Obviously, right now. In this afternoon, we're already past the start time of this, but I'd say it goes through until about 9 o'clock this evening. Snow showers predominantly south of I-70. So here in the metro area, I'm not so concerned. But if you are traveling southbound towards southern Ohio, Kentucky, I just want you to be prepared because there will be some slick spots out there on the roadways. Last night and the night before that, temperatures got well below freezing. So now... Some of that snow and ice will have a little bit of an easier time sticking to the roadways and the pavement. Winter weather advisories now posted down here to the south as well. So Chillicothe, uh, Waverly, down to Vinton. So Vinton County is included. Logan right now is included. Notice that these don't include Pickaway County. So that, and that's just our way of saying, hey, it's just not going to be that bad here. It's going to miss us. And a lot of that precipitation slides down to the south. This was a radar image a few hours ago. Now we're seeing that snow finally building into the area and take a look at the storm track here. All right, there is all your energy right there and all your heavy snowfall is across West Virginia, Northern Kentucky and extreme South Southeastern Ohio. If that storm were to jog even 50 miles further to the north, I'd say, hey, folks, we have a weather impact day today, but we just don't. But I am giving you that weather impact because if you are traveling south towards Kentucky, some of you guys do commute down to that part of the state. Just heads up, you could be running into some travel headaches, to say the least. So earlier today, we saw the snow moving into southern Ohio. Right now, as we head into early afternoon, we are looking at that line of snowfall snaking across the area. Notice that it kind of wobbles a bit, but eventually we do push a lot of that moisture further to the north. And at times, we may see that get just far enough north that we get maybe a flurry, possibly even a snow shower in the Columbus metro area. I just would not hang my bets on that because I do think a lot of this moisture will be going down to the south. As we head towards 930, now we start to kind of break things up. So that's why we had the weather impact until about 9 p.m. Because after 9, all we have are basically just a few leftover snow showers. So a coating right now across parts of uh, Pickaway County, once you get down towards Circleville, about a half inch to an inch. Then as you get down to the south near um, Vinton County and down towards Ross, Ross County, Pike County, looking at about one to as many as two inches when all is said and done. And so overnight tonight, that could create some icy spots on the roadways if you are traveling down to that part of the state. Outside right now, what you see is what you get and you ain't seen nothing yet. We are looking at a very cloudy day out there today. Very dreary. 729 was your sunrise and we hit a brand new milestone. 603 is your sunset and that will be tonight. So finally we're getting that 6 p.m. sunset and I bet you're not complaining because when you head home from work, you head home from school. Finally, we got a little bit more daylight to work with here as we're looking at only about two minutes every day of additional daylight. But that adds up because two minutes a day, that's about 15 minutes per week that you're getting. As we look at your day planner, we got the clouds out there, mid 30s heading into this afternoon. And then we say hello to storm number two. And this will start sliding into the region heading into tomorrow night. Now, as early as five o'clock on your Wednesday morning, take a look at this. This is a powerful storm for parts of Nebraska and Kansas. Look at all the snow here on the map. Meanwhile, the green on the map is that heavy golf moisture that will be streaming up to the north. Notice that as we head towards most of the day by about 730 PM, that low is to the north of us. OK, as a general rule of thumb in meteorology, north of the low is colder. And so that's the snow south of the low is warmer and that's where you get the rain. And so because the low is tracking to our north, we're going to miss out on the snow for this next system. But I am carefully monitoring that purple line right there. That is freezing rain, and I'm a little bit concerned about how close that could get to us here heading into tomorrow. 
So let's talk about that right now. Exactly how close will that freezing rain get to us? And this is what we're looking at here, okay? I think that Madison County, most of Union and Delaware County should be good. But if you're heading out towards uh, Dayton, Urbana, Bell Fountain, there could certainly be a little bit of freezing rain out there for you. For the rest of you, we're just looking at some plain old rain. But as you wake up tomorrow morning, just some light mist, some light drizzle out there. There could be some freezing drizzle early in the morning. And then as we head towards the afternoon, just in time for that commute home on your Wednesday, four o'clock, there's that freezing rain right there. Notice that very quickly that we start kind of pushing that milder air in and that will eventually convert that ice over to all rain. So that's good. We're not looking at any wide scale travel impacts, but you'll notice that as we head towards Wednesday at 10 o'clock, tracking some good rainfall here. And then that rainfall finally comes to an end as we head into Thursday, maybe a few leftover flurries heading into the start of Thursday. How much rainfall are we talking here? It's going to depend on location, but Wednesday night going into Thursday could be looking at about a quarter to a half inch higher amounts. though as you climb up towards Marion and Bucyrus, where they could be looking at more the further to the north that you go so far in the month of February. Not only do we have a snowfall drought, we also are below average in terms of rainfall. We've had about a quarter of an inch so far from, well, that should say February 1st, not December 1st. And so we have a deficit right now of about a half of an inch. Now, the question is, as we look ahead, heading into next week and beyond, the next 14 days, what can you expect? Below average temperatures here. You'll see when we get to the seven day exactly what we're talking about, but the blue on the map shows well below average from New England out to the Ohio Valley. And as we look at rainfall near normal here across Ohio, above average as we head down to the deep south. Seven day forecast shows that as we head into the next few days, the sun comes back out on Friday. Sun's out, guns out, should be beautiful. 34 degrees for the high heading into Saturday. We're going to be tracking our next system and similar to Wednesday night, we get stuck in that same conundrum. We get stuck on the warm side of the low pressure. All right, so now we've got all rain chewing up here on the map. And within the last 60 minutes, we got some brand new data. And now it's showing that we're not going to see as much snowfall on the backside of this system as we initially thought. We will be looking at a little bit of blue showing up here late Saturday night into Sunday, but that will just be a flurry at bats. And then heading into Monday, take a look at that. The cold is back. We're looking at partly cloudy skies, some sunshine, nighttime lows in the single digits. Daytime highs will be mostly in the lower end of the 20s. So it's about to get downright chilly here, tracking another blast of that cold Arctic air as we head into next week. Not done with the single digits yet. No, we're not done. Yeah, I mean, it could get intro. It won't be as cold as January, but we're still going to be tracking temperatures here, probably 20 degrees below normal. So it's important to keep in mind uh, the pets. Obviously, any vegetation yeah. that you have outside or plants, you're going to want to bring those in. But hopefully in a month or so, we'll be done talking about the extreme right. cold. Typically, the worst of the cold is almost always end of January. So I think that that was probably... We probably got past the worst of it, but this is probably just a second wave that won't be quite as severe. A little second cold round yeah. here. Yep, right. so we're going to be sticking with... Uh, Cold topics here for weather trivia. Today, my weather trivia question is true or false? You can have one inch of snow and still have it be called a blizzard. What do you think? Well, this is fantastic. I got a 50 50 chance here. I'm going to go with true because I would think that the blizzard is more so referencing the conditions of what's falling, not actually what sticks. I like you, Jay. You are. Yeah? Yeah, look at that. You are very correct. Makes sense. So it, it's, as long as it's true, as long as it meets other criteria. Does that have to snow for a certain amount of time? Here, I'm glad you asked that. I'm glad you just asked that, Jay. So let's get a look here at that criteria. In order to have a blizzard warning, you have to have sustained winds with gusts at or over 35 miles per hour. You can have falling or blowing snow. So what does that mean? It doesn't actually need to be snowing to have a blizzard. You can have snow on the ground that fell yesterday that's getting blown around and you could call that a blizzard. So technically it doesn't actually need the snow to be a blizzard and it needs to last for at least three hours with visibilities under a quarter of a mile. So that is the criteria. 35 mile per hour winds blowing snow or falling snow quarter mile visibility for three hours. 
to specify, we're not expecting any blizzards. No, we're, we're not. We're just talking about it. We're not, but it's our goal to educate people, so. Absolutely. It is it interesting that it can be, it can have snowed yesterday, not actually snowing, but still be considered a blizzard because the winds are picking up exactly. so much. Exactly. That's yep. wild. So the more you know. Yeah. Well, that does it for us here on 10 TV Plus. I'm Dylan Robichaud alongside Jay Plyburn. Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martz is back here at 6 o'clock. See ya.